process. Your illusions grow like tears on these dreams, as though dreams are fires they want put out. This Indian blood flows as they proclaim freedom from their point of view. Indian blood flows through prison bars, through business streets, through revisions history, through the hole in God's golden halo, blood flowing back into stolen land. This Indian voice carries thoughts they have no time to hear. Sounds of their industrial power speak. Language is more pervasive to the moon. Protect the environment, but protect the material most. This Indian voice speaks of the revolution is not the solution. It's not the end. Revolution means you go back to where you started. This is reality. So if you're going from an oppressed to an oppressor class, no matter what revolution you have, that's what you're going to come back to. Because in order to win your revolution, you got to be better than the bad guys. And once you learn how to be better than the bad guys, you become the new bad guy. And that's how the thing works. This is reality. But, to, but we've been imprinted to believe that rev, revolution is the solution. Now, revolutions may be part of an evolutionary process, but revolutions are not the solution. And if we looked at reality in a practical, coherent way, we would see that. I hear people use the term seventh generation, I think it's cool because the Indians use it and all this and that, you know, but hey, if there's really going to be a seventh, the seventh generation represents a longer evolutionary long-term context is really what it represents if we put it translated into English language and concepts. So I want people to, it's just something that needs, see, because individually, within, we are a part of the reality of evolution. We, we evolve. I mean, our physical form, human form, we evolve from the womb to infant to toddler to preteen or teen or whatever. We evolve. Everything, reality, the natural reality is based upon the ev evolution. That's a part of our natural energy. That's a part of the natural synchronization of being a human being. It's in an evolutionary context. Now the situation that we're in, individual lives, we evolve. Whatever our goods and our, our, our goods and our damages are, we were evolved into this situation. It takes evolving out. But as human beings, the power of our creative intelligence, if we use it clearly and coherent, if we use it and understand to use our intelligence as a way of feeling and seeing and understand the value of our intelligence. I hear this romanticism, well, I think with my heart. No, no, think with your mind, your intelligence. Use your heart to stay alive. Don't overwork it. It's nice and romantic and it sounds good, but it's not practical to reality. I feel with my feelings. I feel with my feelings and I think with my intelligence, my feelings. This is how the being communicates to the human. And the human's responsibility is to use the intelligence to manifest those feelings. But the way we have become imprinted, see, we've substituted. It's like judgment and recognizing, believing and thinking. We, we have, we depend on emotions. I hear it all the time. I'm an emotional person. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I think about holding. But emotions, have you ever had an emotional meltdown and then you later think, well, I, I should have said what I felt? Because you didn't express what you felt, you just had this emotional meltdown. Well, see, that's a sign. The energy, our emotions to me are repressed feelings that don't get to get felt. And then when they can't take it anymore, then there's an outburst, eruption of some sort, some manner, whether it's just inside the head or it splashes on the people outside your head. So through our feelings, there are certain romanticisms all right, because I'm saying this as a native person because, see, we've been romanticized into what I consider a lot of times, it's almost like, I call it the fascism of romanticism. You got to look this way, you got to act that way, otherwise you don't fit the image. And it's been done to all of us in these different ways, shapes, and forms. So I'm saying these things, not to start anything, you don't need to agree with me, it's not about that. I'm going to say it, and if anybody thinks about it, then that's what it's all about. The power of our intelligence.
we can outthink them, and they know it. We'll never outfight them. That industrial ruling class and the corporate entity, the industrial, that industrial ruling class and the corporate right that they have evolved and set up, all right, to run the government, just to run the whole show. You know who they are, all right? If you want names, track down the names of the 2% of the wealthiest people on this planet. Get their names. And then get the minions that work for them and answer to them. And then you will have a day. Because they are very real and they're there. And, but that's who they are. And when you look at it, dealing in terms of energy, they represent the smallest unit of energy on the planet. We represent the largest unit units of energy on the planet. But they have convinced us that power is in voting, power is in money, power is in property. They have convinced us that power is external and that we don't really have any power, that it's all external. And then they, we have been imprinted to use our power against ourselves through our fears and our doubts. Kind of how it works. Am I still making sense or am I getting too nuts? <laughs> This, this is T. Winnie, his quote son. Uh, now, what we're doing now is, I don't know any, whatever he's going to sing is new to me when I hear it. All right? <laughs> but we're just going to do this because why not? in the foreground of hidden in front of us. The holy holies and the cannibals scratch it out. While the planetary and industrial ruling class Reich offered up civilized human sacrifice to gods of profit. Worshiping corporate temple, economic high priest, sacrificing the poor through inflations and recessions in the ways of accumulations of greeds and excesses and needs for always more poor to feed hungry gods. In the faint, sounds of jackboots rapidly approach. Maybe we'll recognize them when they come for us or before our children are grown. That sound will be more familiar to them than the sound of our voice with redistributions of the wealth redistributed upward. In the neon serfdoms where peons are called peasants. And the serfs are being divided into tomorrow's debtors to carry ruling class wealth on the backs of their children. While the predator classes try hiding the scent of reptilian in the neon and promises of all the promises we can want. But if we listen closely, we can hear the scent of reptilian leaking out of their religions, economics, politics, and mouth. As the industrial Reich paints its thousand-year nightmares, industrial military complexes manufacture mass individuality, corporate Nazi enforcers wearing brown shirts of any colors, defining rules of freedoms and industrial law class systems, as their shepherds herd us into the corrals we pretend aren't. Now even as the holy holies and the cannibals scrap it out, the cannibals created and used to their advantage the